has been a warm week across much of Nebraska with heat indices reaching above 100 degrees. Those high temperatures coupled with light winds and humid conditions could have caused problems for the state's cattle. At the ARDC Wednesday, we talked with Nebraska Extension Beef Veterinarian Richard Randall to learn more about how producers can better manage heat stress in cattle. Uh, when we hit these uh, real hot streaks where we have uh, high temperatures, high humidity, and low air movement in terms of wind, um, it gives us a real problem with heat stress in these cattle. Why is it worse, especially in the first few days of this week where we saw not only hot temperatures during the day but also at night? Yeah, the, the real problem comes in too. So these cattle um, start feeling the effects of heat stress when the environmental temperature reaches 70 to 75 degrees. Um, as long as humidity is low and we have fairly cool nights, they have the opportunity to dissipate that heat. But when you get a combination mm -hmm. where you have those high temperatures plus the humidity, uh, the cattle can't handle that nearly as well. And on top of that, when you get situations where during the nighttime that temperature doesn't drop below what we figure to be 70 degrees, uh, then they don't have the opportunity to, di to di dissipate that heat. So two or three days in succession like that, uh, it's a real heat stress emergency on these cattle. What things can producers do specifically in the feedlot that could maybe mitigate losses of animals? Well, uh, the two things that we always come to mind first uh, are water, plenty of water. So water intake in these cattle will increase by as much as 50% or double. So, you know, 1,000 pound cattle, they'll probably be looking at 35 gallons of water uh, a day need. So the ability to get to adequate water source, replenish the water, um, anything that's associated with that is extremely helpful. Uh, the other thing is any air movement at all that we can help uh, to provide these cattle are, uh, is, is a really good thing. Uh, as much as five miles an hour or better in wind can dissipate a lot of that, uh, a lot of that heat. So in situations where there might be wind breaks or other buildings or structures that block wind, um, there's a real dead space behind those areas. So we figure for every foot high that a, a windbreak is, 10 feet uh, distance past that is dead space. So a 10 foot high would, would have a 100 uh, foot uh, area that, that would be pretty dead and wouldn't get wind movement. Should producers look at feeding at different times of the day or feeding a different diet? Yeah, so uh, the the general recommendation is to think about reducing energy densities in those diets. Um, may be somewhat controversial in terms of where that helps or how much that helps. Uh, the other thing is uh, change feeding times, maybe feeding much later in the day or in the evening uh, because uh, when that animal intakes that, that feed then he generates heat and digestion and so uh, they need the opportunity to have that cool off period. Uh, you know, following eating that, uh, that's going to help them. Richard says flies can also be a problem during warm periods as they can cause cattle to bunch up. He says fly control is therefore important to help allow cattle to dissipate heat.